Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to evaluate DSI's Reason Root Cause Analysis System. DSI has spent decades making a name for itself by developing the world's most effective and cutting-edge RCA solutions available. In 2013, we are excited to announce the next evolutionary step in the RCA industry, Reason 9. Reason systems have long been the world's de facto standard for serious, thorough root cause analysis. Now, through a newly engineered interface, this newest version of Reason, Reason 9, is also the easiest system to learn and use in the market by far. This system actually facilitates the user through a process to build an RCA model of an event. And what I hope I can show you here in a moment is how this is a repeatable process, which is required for any organization looking to standardize results and quality of their RCA program. And I want to show you how easy this process is as well. I also intend to show you how Reason is unique from other RCA systems. Reason is not just some fancy way to organize and document what you, you the user, already thinks he knows about a case. A good word processor can help you do that. That's not investigation, that's documentation with predetermined outcomes. Systems of RCA that don't challenge the user's assumptions are really just documenting what he thinks they already know. Only reason the system itself guides the user to validate and challenge his assumptions as he's investigating. In reason, the process itself ensures that the data is verified, logically checked, and proven to be needed in the investigation report. Reason is unique in many ways, but let me just get started showing you the software, and I think that many of these issues will be illustrated to you as we just go forth. First of all, Reason 9 is a web-based online software. With an internet connection and a computer, in a few minutes you can be up and running. There are no big IT issues to cross. The software runs in a web browser, and the data can either be stored securely on your local computer or network, and in this way the data physically never leaves your site, or you can choose to save your data in DSI's secured online hosted repository in the cloud. There are three levels of Reason Investigation, Pro, Express, and Frontline. Frontline is a 15-minute mode of investigation. Now, how much real investigation can be done in 15 minutes? Not a lot. But Frontline is designed to maximize what can be done in that amount of time given the process. For Frontline issues and daily nuisance types of incidents, this mode is best. But there's also the Express mode, which is the two to four hour mode of investigation within Reason. And there's the Pro mode, which is the leave no stone unturned, highly rigorous level of investigation. If your organization is like others, you have all kinds of problems. But the time and energy you spend on different size problems are different. The Reason system has three modes to allow you to escalate the investigation to the caliber of the issue that you're investigating without having to learn different tools and different thinking processes for the different kinds of issues that you have in your operation. So, let's begin an investigation. But before I get started, let me give you the background story. And what I want you guys to experience is, after I give you the story, we're going to get into the software, and you're going to actually experience how the software is going to pull from you the facts and order them correctly into your root cause analysis investigation. Let's get started. So, here's the background story. A man is operating a, a metal scrap compactor unit. It jams. He looks into the unit. He sees that there's jam materials in there, and he reaches in and tries to liberate those jam materials. He thinks he's safe in doing this because there's a cutoff switch on the unit that cuts the power when the door is open. So he doesn't take the step to de-energize the unit. He thinks that the cutoff switch will keep him safe. He reaches in and grabs the materials and begins pulling on those materials. He accidentally hits the actuator button, which is installed right next to the compactor feeder opening that he's sticking his hands in. The machine begins to cycle quickly, and before the employee can remove his hand, the compactor injured the man's hand. It was discovered later that the cutoff switch that was supposed to cut that power off to the unit when that door is open, it was broken off. The employee would not have put his hands in that machine if he had seen it, but the lights in that area were broken, and it was difficult to see very much in that semi-dark environment. There's a lot more to this case, but I've told you enough for us to get started, to build that first what we call set of the root cause analysis model. And I'd, and I'd like you to experience how the software itself is going to pull this from you and lead you and guide you through this process. So, let me begin an investigation here. We'll do a pro investigation. And the problem statement box pops up and it's asking us what do we want to investigate? A change or an event? Uh, they are represented by the blue boxes in the in the software. The green circles are the conditions. Uh, unwanted conditions might be something uh, in your environment that you would like to investigate. Sometimes there's an inaction, something that didn't happen that we want to, want to investigate why it did not. 
And so uh, in this case, obviously it's an event, a change, so we click there. And it brings up the box where we just type in our problem statement that we're beginning the entire investigation to try to solve. In this case, uh, we could word it any way we wished, but it would be something like the man's hand became injured. Okay, did you notice when we put that up, it came at the end of the timeline, and the timeline, this is the greatest change in the Reason software is uh, we're not modeling within the model itself, but on a timeline, uh, so we can see the timing very clearly as we're building each little set and point in time of the model. It uh, gives us the advice, do we want to continue on or stop here, and of course we want to continue on, so click OK. And the Reason process, which is really the questioning process that, that prompts the user along, comes up. And the first thing we have to do is the software knows that changes just don't happen. Changes trigger other changes. And so it's asking us, enter the last event that occurred that, given that this event occurred, this is the last thing that happened, that when this happened, it guaranteed that the employee's hand would become crushed, unless something interrupts the process. And it would be something along the lines of that the compactor cycled. And the software automatically comes up here at the bottom. We call this the visualization area and asks uh, the logic, what we used to call the logic test. We now call it the accuracy check, which is once uh, the compactor cycle, is that all it takes to in injure a hand? Or is there something else that has to be in the equation here to equal that employee's hand becoming crushed? And so this is not true. So we say, no, there's something else needed. Notice what the software does. It uses the reason question and focuses us up on the timeline. In this period, you know, as an investigator, in this period of time before the compactor cycled, what things were true, what conditions were true here that combined with that cycling of the compactor to, to give us this effect over here that his hand becomes injured. And of course, you know, when the compactor cycles, a condition that has to be true ahead of time is that the employee's hand was in the compactor. There are many ways that we could have said that. Uh, Reason wants you to do it in a complete sentence, but you can type it in there any way and any way you wish to, to gather that condition fact. So now the, the, the logic test is instantly down here for us. If we have the equation of his hand in there as a condition in the compactor, and then it cycles, does it become injured? Well, yeah. And we would click yes now, and it would move us on. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an error, and I'm going to make it purposefully, and I want to show you how the software itself would cause the error to be uh, made known. And it's going to be a common error. The most common error is when you take a, a fact that is actually true, but it doesn't belong in this little point in time that we're explaining here on the timeline. It belongs to another point in time. Uh, and so let me make that uh, error here. And in reason, you can just come up here on the timeline. I'm going to put in here that... Uh, a generating condition that you remember the lights that were broken in the area that's an important fact if he had seen those if he, he, he if the lights were on there he would have seen that the switch was broken the control switch cutoff switch and he would not have stuck his hand inside the compactor and so that's an important fact and I'm gonna put it in here and it's saying hey do we have enough sufficiency if his hands in it the lights are broken in the area and the compactor cycles. If you add that up, is that a recipe for getting a hand injury? And of course it is. It is enough together. So I say yes. It's going to ask whether there are any permitting conditions. I'm going to say no. And it's asking for is there any are there any inactions after the compactor cycle before his hand became crushed? Is there something we, he, he could have or anybody could have done to prevent this? No. And so now it's going to ask us we a moment ago said we had enough. Now we want to make sure we don't have too much information for this point in time before we move on to another point in time. Here it's saying if we have the equation of his hands being in there in the dark, but the compactor never cycles, does his hand become crushed? No. We and by saying no, we have just logically validated the fact that the compactor has to cycle, and that fact has now just earned its logical right to be in our investigation. So it move, moves on to the next one. If his hand's in there and the compactor cycles, but it's not true that the lights were broken. He's actually in the light. Does this, does this still happen? And we say yes. 
So in other words, we can remove the fact that the lights were broken, leave the other facts, and this step still happens. And it says, it tells us that that cause isn't necessary and it should be removed. And basically, we just come up here and grab that growth point, and we put that in the parking lot over here until we discover a time, because we're going to move, we know that that's an important fact, and we're going to move to a point in time where that fact belongs, and we'll be able to drag that fact back out of the parking lot onto the timeline where it belongs. So this is the iterative process. After we, we've done the logic test here, we would now come under and you know, deal with, you know, why did the compactor cycle? And now we're explaining a different point in time. So uh, we want to explore that. We say yes, and it says, enter the last event that given this event occurred, it guarantees that that compactor is going to cycle. So again, you know the story. What is the thing that happened? And and it's essentially, you know, he bumped the button or pressed the actuator button accidentally, something like that. Something along those lines. And so if he presses a button, is every time we press a button, does the compactor cycle? No, so we're not logically uh, sufficient. And so again, it's going to focus, okay, what things were in existence in the timeline before he presses the button, That what things were true that combine with the fact he presses the button that causes it to cycle. And this would be uh, the unit was energized, something along those lines. So we have a, a unit that's powered up. He presses the button. It cycles. Uh, and it says, is that enough? If we have an energized unit and he presses the button, does it cycle? Yep, that's enough. And so we say yes. Now it's going to look for permitting conditions. Permitting conditions are the, 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 the unit being energized is an easier fact to see because it was something that was true and was there. But what about those things that were not there? That Because they were not there, it allowed this event to occur. Those things can, can be harder to see. So. It's asking for that. If Is there a condition missing at the time of that change? When this change happened, was there a condition leading up to that point in time that if it had been in place, it would have mitigated or prevented this effect over here? And of course, the the permitting condition was is the cutoff switch was missing or broken. And so we had a missing uh, cutoff switch. The unit's energized, and he presses the button. Is that enough to explain the compactor cycling? And we'd say yes, and it moves us on. And we'd say no more permitting conditions. It, again, would move us to inactions. After he bumps the button, but before in this period of time on the timeline, is there some inaction in this period of time after he pu pushes the button, but before it cycles where we could have run out and done something? And we say no, and it moves us on. And this is the iterative process over and over. And as we're doing that, we are building a tree. This is uh, the tree model thus far that we've built. It was two sets. And we continue building this logic tree until we get down to discover the root causes uh, for our event. And so those facts that are over here in the parking lot and those other facts, by just following this process, the facts that are true and causal just naturally fall into place where they naturally belong in the model. Now, an issue that I don't want you to miss here is this accuracy test that I've been showing you throughout this process is really key uh, to the one of the great advantages of the reason system in that it doesn't let you make a mistake and then waste time going down a rabbit trail. Uh, we are going we're, we're building an understanding of your event and we stop it. We look to make sure we're accurate before we take steps forward in the process. Because if we make a mistake and then we start investigating that, that fact that's true uh, but not causal to our case, we've wasted time. The problem is is that in most systems and in most companies, we tell our investigators, go forth, go investigate, and be objective as you do it. And yet, you know, we tell them don't miss anything and be objective, yet we don't provide them any tools, training, or way to be objective. You know, in this event, there were so many facts that were true. You know, the wind was from the east. It was a Wednesday. 
uh, the, the temperature was 45 degrees and he was having problems in his marriage. All these could be true facts, but how does the investigator tell between true facts and facts that are true that are also causally significant to his investigation? And that's what this accuracy test does for us. It's this very simple logic test. Make sure that we have enough information at every point in time that we're explaining along the story of our event, but we don't have too much. Uh, if a fact played a causally significant role, it will find its home somewhere in the model by following this process. And, and therefore, this is a, an objectivity filter. Those things that are true but not causal will be filtered out. And those facts that are true but we're thinking about them in the wrong way will be naturally positioned in the model where they need to belong. And so this process, we repeat it over and over, building these sets. Here's a finalized model uh, on a different case, but to show you a, a filled out model, uh, this is a pretty large model. Uh, this is the, what we call the tree model. And of course, you know, a tree model is just a way of representing information. Reason is the process that populates the right information into the tree. Uh, and But the tree model is the primary mechanism uh, for communicating the investigation results. For most cases, in a picture, the model can be printed out and communicated in your report, and it shows at the top you know, what happened and all the facts, how they combined, how they touched one another, at what points in time, through the entire story of the event. This model can be printed out uh, in several different types of formats up here in the tree model area. Uh, there's also a formal reporting tool that will help you guide you into building a professional, uh, especially in the case of a serious event and you need a, a formal report. There's a process in here where there's a wizard that guides you through contemplating, including uh, different elements to your report like an executive summary and a root cause theme to your report. And you know, often you look at your report and say, you know, we had these kinds of breakdowns in them, but they kind of thematically are all of this type. And, you know, so this report wizard helps you to present a, a more executive, more formal view of the investigation and the findings to, uh, to your audience. I hope this video was informative. Uh, Every consultant in the world with a business card has a root cause process to offer you, but in truth, reason alone represents one of only three basic approaches for organizations to root cause analysis. We, we thank you for including this in your evaluation process. We at DSI are very excited about the Reason 9 system, and we would love to talk to you and your team as you evaluate your options. You can find out more about Reason 9 or schedule a meeting with us at our website, www.rootcause.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day.